Today is July 14th, 2015. We are at the Ninth Judicial Circuit Conference in San Diego, California. We're here today to interview Judge David Ezra in a brief video oral history to record some reflections of his career in the law. I'm Brad Williams and I'm here on behalf of the Ninth Judicial Circuit Historical Society. This interview will be preserved in the NJCHS archives and the Historical Society will provide you, Your Honor, with a copy for your own use. Thank you. So how are you this morning? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Uh, glad to have you here today. It's a pleasure. Um, in doing a little background reading about uh, you, I discovered that you were born in Columbus, Ohio. I was. Is that where you grew up? No. <laughs> I actually grew up in Hawaii. Uh, my father uh, was in uh, Columbus after, the, uh, after World War II, after his active duty service uh, during World War II, getting uh, treatment for war wounds and so forth. And uh, uh, so my uh, older sister, my mother, and uh, uh, were there with him. I was born there. And uh, uh, my younger brother as well, and then they uh, moved. We moved uh, and ended up in Hawaii, and I was raised in uh, Hawaii. Were you raised on Oahu? Yes, yes, yes. Initially over on the windward side of Oahu in Kailua, and then later my parents moved over to the leeward side, and, uh, and I grew up there. Um, I also noticed, noticed that you um, did your undergraduate work at St. Mary's University. I did. Well, I did it. Uh, I started out, I had classes at both uh, Chaminade University in Honolulu and the University of Hawaii uh, in, uh, in Honolulu. And, um, and then uh, transferred to St. Mary's. I wanted to be a lawyer. And um, when I was... Um, going to college, and, and indeed when I went to law school, the, the state of Hawaii did not have a law school. So if you wanted to be a lawyer, you had to go to the mainland and go away. And so uh, we had uh, family in, the, uh, in, in North Texas, and uh, even though St. Mary's is in San Antonio, um, uh, the, uh, the thought was uh, by my parents, have, if you're going to go to the mainland, go someplace where we have you within striking distance of some relatives. So. Uh, the interesting thing is that my, uh, my classes at the University of Hawaii were, were sufficient to um, uh, qualify me uh, uh, in, I think, 2012 to receive their uh, uh, Lifetime Achievement uh, Award uh, for, uh, for an alumni, even though I actually didn't graduate from there. That's interesting. Yeah, it was quite an honor. I was uh, quite... Uh, uh, taken aback by it. Um, so you said you'd, you were determined when you went to undergraduate uh, school at Chaminade um, and then on to St. Mary's that you were determined to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a lawyer, yes. When, when did, how did that come about? Were there role models in your family um, that no, influenced I, I, you? No, I'm, I'm uh, really the, uh, the first uh, lawyer in my immediate family. Uh, I have a, co a cousin uh, uh, retired Judge uh, Vic Bianchini, of the, uh, who was a former magistrate uh, judge and superior court judge here in, actually here in San Diego County, um, but nobody, uh, nobody else in, in my family uh, are, are lawyers, and so I'm really the first one. No, I just thought it was a, a, an interesting and a, and a great way um, to um, spend one's career. I always, I didn't, I never enjoyed math, was never a good subject for me, uh, but I was always very good at writing. And so uh, I knew that writing uh, was, a, was a major component of being a lawyer. And so uh, that kind of, I kind of settled there. So what was your undergraduate degree in? Actually, I was a business major. Uh, I had a bachelor, I got a bachelor of business administration degree. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, you apply for law school at St. Mary's. Right. And um, uh, tell me a, bit, a little bit about your law school experience. Well, I, uh, I enjoyed it. St. Mary's is certainly not one of the uh, uh, 
uh, more well-known law schools. But when I went there, um, they had a, a real uh, philosophy. They, they uh, uh, were known as a, as a, quote, lawyer's law school. They, they, they didn't have pretensions. They weren't like uh, Yale trying to teach great law professors and thinkers. They were trying to educate people to be good practicing lawyers, which is precisely what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a trial lawyer. And uh, I had uh, some wonderful professors there. Um, I got to meet and, and become uh, close to uh, the late uh, Leon Jaworski, who was the Watergate prosecutor. He was a very, very close friend of uh, uh, the dean at St. Mary's at the time, the late uh, Dean Ernest Raba. And uh, they had both served on the staff uh, during the Nuremberg war crimes trials together. And he was doing some adjunct teaching at St. Mary's uh, because at that point he was semi-retired. And so, uh, and he thought very highly of St. Mary's and, and uh, his firm, full, at, called at the time Fulbright and Jaworski, um, hired many St. Mary's graduates. And so um, I was very pleased. I could have transferred. I, I uh, was number one in my class and I graduated number one in my class. And I could have transferred elsewhere, but I chose to stay there. And I'm not sorry that I did. Well, are there any other law professors besides uh, uh, Leon Jaworski who stand out in your mind? Sure. Um, I, Charles Cantu, who later became the dean at uh, St. Mary's, uh, was, uh, I thought, an excellent torts and, and, uh, professor. Um, I had a, um, uh, a labor law professor named Ed Penshorn, who was a practicing labor lawyer, had done a lot of work down on the Houston docs and was very well regarded as a, as a labor lawyer and I, I always thought very highly of him. Uh, Professor Joe Anderson was uh, uh, very uh, influential uh, to me because he was a, uh, uh, a real advocate for justice and a, and a former city assistant, I think assistant city attorney in San Antonio, but he was a great guy and I, 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 there were just a lot of them. It was a smaller law school so I got to know all of these uh, professors uh, very well and uh, I like that atmosphere rather than say the University of Texas Law School which I think very highly of but which has a student body I think in excess of a thousand students so and I hire University of Texas uh, law graduates as clerks and I have a good relationship with them but that kind of size is, was just not something I was looking for. How was the adjustment moving uh, from Hawaii to San Antonio? Well, it wasn't uh, much of an adjustment, to be honest with you, because the climates, uh, although it's warmer in San Antonio for sure than it is in Honolulu, uh, they don't have the humidity we have in Honolulu. And uh, uh, I grew up in a mixed race society. Almost all of my friends to the person were either Asian, um, or uh, mixed Polynesian, part Hawaiian. Um, I was in a distinct minority in my high school graduating class as a, as a, a Caucasian, we, we refer to in Hawaii as a Haole. So moving to San Antonio, which has a, a large Latino population, was no uh, uh, different for me. I mean, uh, I like a diverse uh, uh, place to live and, and uh, San Antonio is a lovely city. It has a large military population. Um, uh, I'm a veteran myself. I was an army officer. Uh, and uh, in, in uh, Hawaii, of course, had a large military population. There are many, many similarities between San Antonio and uh, uh, Honolulu. Absent, of course, the ocean. <laughs> well, you have the river. <laughs> well, we have, we do, the, we, and I see that every day. <laughs> but it's not quite the Pacific Ocean. Right, exactly, exactly. Well, speaking of the military, I understand that um, uh, you joined the Army um, while you were still in law school, is that right? I did. Um, uh, I uh, went through the um, uh, ROTC program and uh, I was commissioned and, and uh, then was deferred to finish law school, yeah. 
I see. I also was in the had been in the Marine Corps officer program and then transferred over. Oh, I see. Um, did you ever see active duty? Oh, I did. I was at Fort Gordon, uh, Georgia, and then uh, later I was um, at uh, with the 25th Infantry Division at Schofield Barracks for a while. Uh, not a long time, but a little while. And then I was uh, my reserve time was with the. Uh, 322nd uh, Civil Affairs Group at Fort DeRussi in Hawaii. So you never got sent to uh, Vietnam? No, no, no. By the time I went on active duty, actually, they were pulling people back from Vietnam. I see. Um, so um, uh, you graduate from, uh, from law school in 72. True. Um, and uh, you did a clerkship, but it was kind of unusual. Weren't you a law clerk at the Office of Corporate Counsel? Well, yes, I did. I worked <laughs> um, I worked for a really fine lawyer named Paul Devins, who was the corporate uh, corporation counsel. And uh, uh, it, it, he had a program where he had young lawyers come in and, and work for him. And I did work for him for about six months. And uh, it was a... Uh, it was terrific, actually, because I got to learn all about the city, and I got to, you know, well, of course, I'd grown up there, but I mean the legal part of the city. And uh, uh, and he was a great lawyer and a fine gentleman, and um, and he taught me a lot. I He was a real mentor. Had you passed the bar by this time? Not at that point, no. I, had, I took the bar and then went on active duty. Oh, I see. I didn't uh, find out my results. Uh, for the bar until my dad called me up um, uh, as I was on my way to Fort Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, the Hawaii bar uh, was not an easy bar in those days, and there were a lot of people who didn't pass it. I remember a uh, very bright woman who graduated from University of California, Bolt Hall or Berkeley Law School, uh, pretty much a at the top of her class, I think, or close to it, who failed the bar. So it was not uh, the first time she passed again, uh, but uh, second time around. But uh, it, it was a uh, it was a tough bar, so did, it was, there wasn't any guarantees. Did you take a, a review course? Yeah, it was an unbelievable review course. <laughs> they uh, had us at uh, Ilani School, which is one of the private schools in Hawaii, it had an amphitheater, a gigantic. Uh, tape recorder sitting in front of us, reel to reel, and they just would put the tapes on, and we would sit there and look at that tape recorder spinning and taking notes. Not the kind of review course they have today with video. It was brutal. I'll bet. Uh, it, was an, it was an exercise in perseverance just to get through the bar review class. Forget the bar itself later. <laughs> That's interesting. That's, it's very different than having someone stand up. Yes. And, no, and, we just and, and lecture watched to this you. gigantic tape recorder with reel-to-reel -reel tape. And I don't suppose there was any pausing. No pausing. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to get up and use the restroom, you missed whatever it was that was going on. I see. So tell me what happened um, uh, after you left the Office of Corporate Counsel. Well, I... Um, Actually, uh, then I went on active duty. When I came back from active duty, I was hired and I, and I worked for a period of about six or seven months for a very small law firm with a very famous uh, tr a lawyer, trial lawyer by the name of Hyman Greenstein. I worked in his office. There were very, very many. Um, uh, they, this isn't usually in my bio, and I don't know why it always, often gets left off, not intentionally. Uh, Mr. Greenstein was, uh, some say, the model for the lawyer in Kane Mutiny. Interesting. He uh, was a defense uh, lawyer and uh, never lost a case, and then became a prosecutor and never lost a case he, uh, during World War II. He uh, graduated from both the University of Chicago Pharmacy School and Law School at the age of 22. He was brilliant, but very eccentric. <laughs> And, uh, and I got a lot of, uh, I mean, I was, uh, when I came out, he, he, I, I came into his office, um, I think it was my first or second day on, on the job. I wasn't long out of the service. And uh, he uh, handed me a file and said, the trial starts on Monday on Kauai, good luck. 
<laughs> Trial by fire. <laughs> yes, I did handle the personal injury case. <laughs> Tried a personal injury case over in the uh, state court in uh, Kauai on <laughs> starting Monday. Wow. Um, and uh, but I was there, and then I um, was hired uh, by a very fine man named Howard Hoddock, who had been the U.S. attorney in Hawaii. Uh, yeah, during the Truman administration for a period of time during the territorial days at a firm called Anthony Hoddock, Reinwald & O'Connor, which was a very old law firm at the time. They've morphed now many times, and so it's really, although it's a continuation, it's really not the same firm, but it was a firm um, headed by Garner Anthony, J. Garner Anthony, who had been the Attorney General of Hawaii uh, at a period during World War II and later won the uh, s a case in the Supreme Court declaring martial law unconstitutional. Uh, and I was there for eight years and became a partner after I believe four and a half or five years. Um, and uh, subsequent to that, uh, several of us wanted to do nothing but commercial litigation. They were going in a different direction and we wanted to do commercial litigation uh, and uh, uh, I had been doing a lot of construction litigation. And so uh, we formed our own firm in 1980. Myself, a fellow named John Moon, uh, the late Peter Whelan, and uh, Michael O'Connor. When did you begin thinking that you wanted to become a judge? Uh, I never thought I wanted to become a judge. <laughs> uh, I uh, was... Uh, perfectly happy practicing law, and uh -huh. I enjoyed it very much, and we were doing very well financially, and I had a lot of very good friends. I was actually, uh, I had won, um, I was lead trial counsel in, the, uh, in, a, in a very successful uh, case uh, involving reapportionment of uh, uh, the, the only successful case ever, I think, in Hawaii involving reapportionment of both the state and the, and the city. And... Uh, because they had been badly gerrymandered under the law, as a three-judge panel had found. And um, uh, I guess I came to the attention of uh, some people, and I came went through the something called a Carter Commission. Oh, okay. The old Carter Commissions. And uh, although I was appointed by um, President Reagan, I'm very proud of the fact that I had the 100% support of Senator, the late Senator Dan Inouye, and Spark Matsunaga, who were great, uh, great men. And um, they saw to it that I got my hearing, even though it was too late in the uh, Reagan administration, and uh, saw to it that uh, I, my, I got my vote uh, and I was uh, confirmed in executive session by the Senate. How, how did the confirmation hearing go? Uh, the confirmation hearing was fine. There wasn't any issues. I had bipartisan support, and so I was very fortunate. I, I was a little nervous there because there was somebody else who was being questioned at the same time I was. So they didn't do as well. <laughs> Unfortunately, did not get confirmed. There were some issues about there being uh, members of a club that uh, didn't admit uh, African Americans or something of that kind, and that was not a it was not a happy hearing for them. Um. And as I understand it, you you took you were um, nominated to succeed uh, Sam King. Is that right? That's correct. Yes, and he went on to serve as a senior judge. Uh, his he had been, I think, the vacancy had been open for four or five years at the time I filled it. Um, and he went on to serve as a colleague and uh, for, you know, until his uh, death uh, a few years ago, and, and he was well over ninety. Um, so it was a real privilege uh, to know him. He was a fine guy. He was a mentor, as was uh, Judge, the late Judge Pence, Martin Pence, who I had practiced before. I'd practiced before Judge King as well. In fact, Judge King had sworn me in as a uh, lawyer while I was still in my uh, uniform uh, to the federal bar. <laughs> interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> On his first day as a uh, federal judge, interestingly Oh, enough. my goodness. Um, well, I'm, I know that uh, over time uh, on the bench in, in uh, Hawaii, you've heard a lot of cases. And, yes. And a lot of cases uh, uh, that come before the federal court there are environmental cases. Yes, I've had a lot of environmental cases, a um, tremendous number of them. There, there's. Um, I had a huge case involving uh, 
the Felix, so-called Felix case, which reshaped Hawaii education. I also that oh, tell us about that. Years. Well, Felix that was a case. huge case. It involved hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, Hawaii was found. Uh, in fact, they conceded that uh, the state did not meet constitutional standards in dealing with uh, uh, children who uh, were entitled to uh, special education, and uh, you know their their practices were were wholly inadequate, and uh, they had to reform the entire education system in Hawaii to meet uh, constitutional standards. It was a, a huge leap forward. It really brought Hawaii out of the dark ages in, in education. Uh, that's a, something that was said by a Hawaii state educator, um, and it's one of the cases I'm most proud of handling. Uh, it was quite controversial at the time. There were a lot of state legislators who were not happy with the fact that I was requiring them to spend money. I had to find the state in contempt twice. But ultimately, everybody came around and we got it done. Excellent. Are there other cases uh, that stand out in your mind? From oh, I've got, you know, I mean, after 27 plus years on the bench, I mean, there's just too many to mention. Uh, uh, you know, I think one of the things I'm most proud of is that, uh, and, and have had the greatest satisfaction, had nothing to do with the cases I've handled it. I was a adjunct professor at the University of Hawaii Law School for 34 years, and um, the longest serving adjunct, I think, in their history, and actually one of the longest serving members of the faculty uh, in any capacity. What did you teach? I taught first legal remedies for many years and then federal courts. If I was still in Hawaii, instead of having transferred to Texas, I would be still teaching there today. <laughs> Interesting. Well, you also had uh, great longevity uh, on the bench. Um, yes. As I understand it. The uh, longest uh, serving uh, active judge in the history of, the, of either the state or the territory of Hawaii. One case that caught my mind, caught my eye uh, in researching your background was a voting rights case uh, from 97, um, Cayetano. Rice versus Cayetano? Yes. Yes, it's can true. You, can you remind us a little uh, bit about that? That was a, actually, uh, I still think I was right. The Ninth Circuit thought I was right, uh, but the majority of the Supreme Court didn't agree with the Ninth Circuit or me. Uh, basically, uh, it, was a, it was a case involving uh, whether in voting for Office of Hawaiian Affairs, uh, the voting could be limited to Native Hawaiians. Um, and uh, my feeling there was that uh, history showed that there was a, uh, Native Hawaiians uh, were, as a group, uh, effectively uh, should and could be treated, and Congress had treated them, uh, the same as Native Americans. And um, uh, just as Native Americans are the ones who vote in tribal elections, um, my view was that uh, Native Hawaiians should have that right as well. Um, and the Ninth Circuit, and it was a panel that had uh, Republican appointees on it. It wasn't uh, some, you know, as people like to call it, liberal panel of the Ninth Circuit. Judge Pam Reimer was on that panel, highly respected. And we had a couple of judges, uh, justices of the Supreme Court who agreed with us, uh, but just not you know, so we had more federal judges who said I was right than said I was wrong, but not in the right combination. <laughs> uh, well, but I'm still very proud of that decision, and and because I still think it's right, and I think ultimately will be vindicated. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the vote count? In the no, Court? I don't. I wish I did. No, I was thinking about that the other day because somebody asked me, but I couldn't remember it. I see. Um, You've been also, a long time. I know it's been <laughs> a long time. Um, You've also done a lot of judicial administrative work besides yes, you were chief yes. judge. Yes, I was uh, chief judge for seven years of the court. I was, I'm the, to my knowledge, I'm the only, well, I was president of the Ninth Circuit District Judges Association. I was, I was treasurer, vice president, and president of the Ninth Circuit District Judges Association. I think I'm the only Hawaii judge that ever served in that capacity. Um, I am the only Hawaii judge from Hawaii ever to be elected uh, as a member representing the Ninth Circuit to the Judicial Conference of the United States. And I served as a member of the Judicial Conference of the U.S. Um, I was uh, vice president of the Federal Judges Association, chair of the Benefits Committee for over a decade. Um, 
I'm still a member of the Benefits Committee, uh, although I gave up the chairmanship when I was doing too many other things. Um, and uh, I was on the uh, member of the Bankruptcy Committee and chair of the Long Range Planning Committee when they were doing a lot of, in fact, the Chief Justice extended my term for an extra year because we were right in the middle of uh, some very critical planning at that, uh, at that point. So, yeah, I've had, uh, and I was a member of the, uh, the Chief Justice appointed me as a member of the Advisory Council on Budget and Finance of the, uh, of the Judicial Conference. So. Uh, I, I have had my share. Those are all important positions and, and have a long, especially the long-range long, long range planning committee that would yeah, have, a, that, have a long-range effect. Hopefully. <laughs> one, one would hope. One would hope. And now, now you're sitting by designation in um, uh, the Western District of Texas. That, that is true, actually. I, I am told I have more cases on my calendar now in Texas than the entire District of Hawaii does. Um, with all of its judges. Um, Hawaii has uh, a very low caseload now, and um, uh, they were looking for people who would be willing to help out. They desperately needed help. I've always sat around the circuit. I, uh, they used to refer to me as the traveling judge. Um, I handled some major cases in Idaho and sat regularly there in Boise for several years. Uh, I would say Nevada in Las Vegas for over 20 years regularly, uh, Arizona for 15 years or so um, on a regular basis, and other places, San Diego, here I sat for many years on and off to help out. So it, I've always been, that's always been a part of my tenure as a judge. I've always done a lot of uh, helping out, and so I, this was a natural for me, and uh, they desperately needed the help um, there, and still do. And um, and so I feel like I'm making, I, I hope I'm making a, a contribution. I have a full caseload in San Antonio, both, um, which is the Western District of Texas, both civil and criminal. I have half the civil caseload in Midland, Odessa, and Pecos, Texas, and a substantial chunk of cases in Austin. Did you... Did you get chosen to go to, 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 go to San Antonio? I was asked. Or you, you were asked. And it's, you've come full circle. Yes, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's interesting. Well, um, I've enjoyed chatting with you, uh, Judge. Well, it's been but my pleasure. But, but, but I have another one final question I want to ask you. And, sure. And what haven't I asked you about that you'd like to tell us? Well, I've loved the job. You know, you asked me initially whether uh, it was something I sought out, and I truly hadn't. I mean, I think that um, I, w I had been very happy as a lawyer. I enjoyed my partners, and I enjoyed the clients that I worked with, but I have found it tremendously enriching. I've enjoyed the, uh, the responsibilities and the work that I've had the privilege of doing, and I consider it a great privilege. Um, I've enjoyed working with the young people. Uh, I'm very proud of my law clerks over the years. Some of them are, uh, you know, one of them is under consideration right now for a United States District Judgeship. Um, many of them have gone on to become uh, prominent in, as lawyers and partners in major law firms, professors at great law schools, and, um, and government uh, officials at every level in, in, in every capacity. And uh, that's something I'm extremely proud of. And I'm, I'm very uh, proud of my former students and the fact that I was able to uh, teach for so many years. I enjoyed that tremendously. So um, I, I think I've had uh, a good life in the law, and I, I hope to continue for a while. <laughs> well, thank you very much for making this time to sit well, down thank and you. chat with us. Thank you very much for allowing me the opportunity.